Hey, it's Dr. Linda Davis, and uh, today I want to go through uh, Chapter 2 and go through the high points with you with that from your leadership textbook. This is just going to be an audio file. First, we want to explain the universality of traits of effective leaders. Now, traits are universal in the sense that they are certain traits that most effective leaders have. However, traits are not universal in the sense that there is no one list of traits that is clearly accepted by all researchers, and not all effective leaders have all the traits. Number two, describe the big five personality dimensions. So let's go through all five. The certainty personality dimension includes leadership and extroversion traits. Remember extroversion traits, when, some, some, when someone's an extrovert, they're very outgoing. The agreeableness personality dimension includes traits related to getting along with people. The adjustment personality dimension includes traits related to emotional stability. The consciousness person I'm sorry, the conscientiousness personality dimension includes traits related to achievement. The openness to experience personality dimension includes traits related to being willing to change and try new things. So those are the big five personality dimensions. Number three, discuss why the trait of dominance is so important for managers to have. Because the dominance trait is based on the desire to be a leader, this trait affects the other traits in a positive or negative way based on that desire. Number four, state how the achievement motivation theory and the leader motive profile, which we often refer to as LMP, are related and different. Now, achievement motivation and leader motive profile theories are related because both are based on the need for achievement, power, and affiliation. They are different because the achievement motivation theory is a general motive profile for explaining and predicting behavior and performance while the LMP, which is the leader motive profile, is the one profile that specifically explains and predicts leadership success. Number five, identify similarities and differences among theory X and theory Y, the Pygmalion effect and self-concept. The concept of theory X and theory Y is similar to the Pygmalion effect because both theories focus on the leader's attitude about the followers. The Pygmalion effect leader's attitude of I'm sorry, the Pygmalion effect extends theory X and theory Y attitudes by including the leader's expectations and how he or she treats the followers, using this information to explain and predict followers' behavior and performance. In contrast, theory X and theory Y focus on the leader's behavior and performance. Both approaches are different from, from self-concept because they examine the leader's attitudes about others, whereas self-concept relates to the leader's attitude about him or herself. Self-concept is also different because it focuses on how the leader's attitude about him or herself affects his or her behavior and performance. Number six, describe how attitudes are used to develop four leadership styles. The leader's attitude about others includes theory Y, which is positive, and theory X, negative attitudes. The leader's attitude about him or herself includes a positive self-concept or a negative self-concept. Combinations of these variables are used to identify four leadership styles. We have theory Y positive self-concept, theory Y negative self-concept, theory X positive self-concept, and theory X negative self-concept. All right, number seven, compare the three levels of moral development. At the lowest level of moral development, preconventional behavior is motivated by self-interest, seeking rewards and avoiding punishment. At the second level, conventional behavior is motivated by meeting the group's expectations to fit in by copying others' behavior. At the highest level, post-conventional behavior is motivated to do the right thing at the risk of alienating the group. The higher the level of moral development, the more ethical is the behavior. Number eight, explain the stakeholder approach to ethics. Under the stakeholder approach to ethics, the leader or follower creates a win-win situation for relevant parties affected by the decision. If you are proud to tell relevant stakeholders your decision, it is probably ethical. If you are not proud to tell others your decision or you keep justifying it, the decision may not be ethical. All right, I hope you, these key facts on the highlights of Chapter 2 help you.